Hey, gentlemen, how's it going today so far? Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for your time this morning. Um, okay, I just got to tell you after watching this, I have now canceled my order for my Tim. So just letting you know that. <laughs> Damn it. I thought it was going to be such a good advertisement for Tim's as well. You know, Amen, if it was you, <laughs> you, I would be like, no problem. As Tim, right. so much. So I want to get into this because, Mark, let's start with you. Um, what was your initial reaction to this script? And also, when you read it initially, did it kind of scare you a little bit as to what our future might look like? Yes and no, because I, I love Google. I love my little Google Nest. I'm sure everyone out there, they have an Alexa or a Google. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the interesting thing, right, is what happens yeah. when technology goes too far or we um, we have devices listening to us all the time and we don't know what's been recorded. So I, I, when I read it, I was really fascinated by it. Um, I thought it was really gripping and exciting um, and I couldn't, couldn't put it down. Um, so yeah, they, they definitely just know this movie is interesting, right? Because it's just fascinating what is happening in the world just now. Yeah. Scarily so, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Eamon, how about you? Because you're playing this guy who, I mean, realistically, we're not really quite there yet. I mean, like, as Mark said, it's, you know, we do have this AI and things that help us with, you know, but we don't really have these robots full up that look like real people coming into our home and taking care of us and whatever. How do you approach this role? Because you really don't have anything other than the script to go on. Yeah, I think when I first read it, I, I think it was exactly that that made me excited about it because playing a robot that is basically a data collector and analyzer does it as an actor. I think it seemed like a really big challenge for me and that's what made me excited about it. Yeah. But I also liked, I guess and at first I sort of thought a lot about the, the robot aspect of it all, which is important. But then at some point I felt like I had to sort of, coming at it maybe at a different angle and and I've talked to Spencer a lot sorry I can't, can't get rid of my dumb tree but anyway uh, I spoke to Spencer a lot about it and it was it felt to me when I first read this it, I mean it's very propulsive and it was a great read just in general I really like enjoy it. it's it's really nice when you get a script that you enjoy reading the first go um, and it was very much that Spencer and Sarah did a, a good job with that and it reminded me so much of like a 90s thriller yeah, vibe, and then it started. And and one of my favorite movies from the nineties was The Good Son. Mm, yes, uh, yeah. And so I thought it was like, oh, how cool if I approach it like he's like a little bit older, but totally the good son, you know. And I think Spencer references a lot, um, Fatal Attraction, that sort of stalker thriller thing. But for me, the robot aspect, of course, is very important. But I thought the scariness and the creepiness, coupled with exactly what Mark was saying, that that it, it, it's so relevant but then to add an aspect of like the good son vibe I thought was kind of the element that would make it just that little bit more scary because he is uh he he has he's not a human and he doesn't have human qualities but he can right. he's learning how to read uh people and that to me is the scariest aspect so I sort of plugged into my good son sort of vibe and that sort of character-wise helped me put it into a position that was playable instead of, you know, I'm a robot. I definitely did the first draft of this sort of stuff. And Mark said, no, no. <laughs> nah, nah. Well, this <laughs> is the thing. You have to make them human-like because that adds the element of the of the thriller of this. Absolutely. If he was more like this, it wouldn't have been, you know, I agree. I, I loved your performance in this. Mark, I wanted to know the dynamic of you working, you and Eamon working together, what that was like, because in the beginning, you know, this guy comes to, to your house, he's like going to be the servant. And then we've got the thriller aspect developing. What was it like for the two of you to work together? Well, us both working <laughs> together was really fun. So <laughs> that was a good laugh. Um, <laughs> In terms of the characters, I do definitely think Paul felt threatened straight away. I think sure. anyone would, you know, being yeah. put under a lot of pressure. Suddenly you're trying to cook your best dish and you're being trumped like so easily, you know. Um there's there's no use of Paul anymore, he's done. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would definitely feel that, you know. 
which again is fascinating because then if we look at the broader picture and what's happening in, in society now is, you know, jobs are being taken. AI are taking jobs. It's fascinating. Exactly. So the yeah. role of the guy in the house, the useless guy, especially, <laughs> he's no more, he's done. He's done. <laughs> but what would it be like if had this character been a woman? Oh. Hmm. Who, Mark's character? Well, no. It, um, it, oh, Tim. Tim. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great proposition. Maybe that's right? the sequel. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I think that could, because I, I would see this in a whole different in different, different way. So Still the thriller cool. aspect, but it would be interesting to see the woman coming the in. The dynamic of, yeah, that sort of, the, 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 I mean, the competition aspect, as Mark said, is like such a big part of it. And that's fun to play. But yeah, I mean, that would be kind of amazing to see the, the flip, because the male competition thing is, we it works so well in the movie, and we understand that sort of, the masculine sort of peacocking sort of stuff. But it would be really cool to see what it, what it's like, actually, yeah. from the female yeah. I still yeah. think he would be so threatened. I would anyone would be. Of course, if you're playing him, Mark, he will be threatened till the day you know he dies. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Eamon, I gotta ask you this because you played creepy and bad so darn good. I mean, you you've just got that <laughs> lock. I don't know how you justify in your mind that these characters are not so bad. Like, how do you do that? Ah, uh, look. You know, this question, I get this question a lot. And every time it really actually does surprise me because I don't think that I am that creepy, but I get why it works. Well, I think maybe I, I genuinely do approach every character with empathy, of course, and like situational stuff. Like usual, if you're playing the bad guy, you have to like him and you have to find out why and stuff. And I guess I think it's fun to play bad or, or or traumatized or however you want to classify it because there's and, and I come you know I started out in theater and and I, I when I first and the thing that got me onto theater was Hamlet and which a lot of people a lot of actors cite but there was one line in Hamlet that I always think about when I get one of these kind of characters there's he says at some point there's a there's a kind of fighting in my heart that will not let me sleep and I think that's the thing that makes these people that I've played interesting to me, that there is, yes, there's deeds and there's choices and all that sort of stuff. And of course that can be debated and talked about. But for me, if there's something that shakes them from the inside, that continually is shaking them from the inside, that's kind of, that's the mess that's fun to get into, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then everyone calls me creepy and like, you know, weird and stuff. And, you know, that's fine. I can take that. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, well, and, and bad is, like you say, more fun to play, no question about it. You can, it's such juicy role. Okay, so just to wrap it up, um, Mark, we'll start, I'm going to ask you both this, and Mark, we'll start with you. Um, okay, let's say the Tim technology was really something that was, um, you know, a, a good thing. What in your house would you need help with? If you had somebody come in and you would need some help oh taking God. care of something. DIY, just all DIY. <laughs> This I'm all, I'm so bad. I am so so bad. <laughs> like, even hanging up a picture, I get stressed. So, <laughs> handy man, handyman kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. And Avon, what about you? What would you use one for? I'm a terrible cook, Bunny. I'm a terrible cook. And so I think, and I agree with Mark. So if we combine the two, see, Tim's not so bad. He yeah. can do all that stuff. It's great. Just. Yeah. Hope that your wife isn't, you know, followable and lovable. Then that's the problem. Listen, guys, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Uh, you've both done such a great job in this film, and it just creeped me right out and totally makes you think. There's no question about it. Uh, Happy New Year to you both, and thank you so much for your time. Good luck with the movie. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye-bye.